Step one, chapter four of bluesy interlude. In this chapter, we're gonna learn a blues scale, the B blues. We're gonna learn a beautiful blues tune um, from New Orleans. We're gonna learn a blues tune written by yours truly, and we're gonna learn how to growl. So we're gonna have a little break from learning our black notes, the F sharp and the C sharp, and we're gonna just slide into the blues, which is where we're gonna start jamming in, in uh, passage of time to come as well. So this is what we're gonna do in this particular chapter. Step two is we're now going to learn our first blues scale. Our first blues scale is B blues. So the notes in B blues are, are these, Katie, ready? Okay, so the note B, six fingers on D, E, F, which is the blue note, which you switch to the F sharp, two fingers on for the A, and one for the B. So it's B blues. So we're now going to play from left to right. <laughs> So if you play that blue scale without the blue note, there's no bluesy feel, but as soon as you put that lovely blue note in, it sounds really bluesy, doesn't it? So you already sound good doing that. Now, whenever we play that, um, we're going to play that. We normally do what we call a circle source. We play the notes wherever they live. Now, obviously, we haven't done our top and bottom notes, but if we just do it, um, we just do it from the low D. So let's just try that from the low D. So you're going to go low D, E, F, F sharp. Brilliant. Now, put six fingers to the one. I'm going to do the same thing all the way to the top. So those are all the notes currently that you've got. So when you play, run it around like that. It sounds fantastic. B R D F. It sounds like B A D E F F, and F sharp being sorry, the F being the blue note. All right. So that's the B blues. Run it up and down. It sounds fantastic. If you can just tap your foot and go. Really sound like you can play. All right. So just do that again in front of the TV, and get your B blues lit. And now, and then we're going to learn, learn it within the tune. Okay, cool. Step three of a bluesy interlude is to learn the world famous tune from New Orleans called St. James's Infirmary. Now, there have been various versions by this. The most famous one started out with Louis Satchmo Armstrong, one of the greatest musicians of all time. Uh, but there have been versions by Hugh Laurie, did one recently. Uh, Willie Nelson's done one, Bob Dylan's done one, Van Morrison's done one, lots of people have done it. It's a very famous old tune. So, and this is going to incorporate playing B blues. So each verse is different and you'll be able to hear the power of the blue note when we bring it in. The other thing is, this is also a tune that when, as you get into it, you'll be able to get into bending notes and using your tonguing and your wearing and your wooing. So really put some expression in this. So once you've got the feel of each phrase, put the articulation in there to really make it sound fantastic. Okay, so. We're going to start with the first verse. We're going to run it through with Katie and again play it against the music with and without the sax when you've got this. And again, reference Louis Armstrong's version because that's the version that I first heard this fantastic tune. Okay, so if we go for a couple of phrases here, Katie, so we go. So here we go. all the time and also just like I say that little bit of math piece week. Bring the wires and the woozy. Then 
your thumb is? That's it, so it's just lots of pressure pressing. <laughs> and if the note doesn't sit down for you other than your thumb not working, just flick the tongue on it. Good. First thing. Or you can put the extra note in, sorry. I'll play it and then play it back to me and then we'll do the last two together, okay? And the last two lines together. A tough old tune, lovely tune. Louis Armstrong singing magnificently well. Okay, so take your time and learn your first blues tunes. It sounds lovely solo. Equally, go back and do it with the backing track. There's, there's, there's there with it, with and without. It's actually again training your ear all the time as well. And when you're crossing that bridge and you get that little sound, it's either the thumbs arriving late or that future wedding ring finger or something's arriving a split second late. So just be aware of when you're coordinating the crossing and slightly change that airflow as well. A little bit from high to low. Think it up, think it down and also flick the tongue on if the note's not sitting down for you, okay? So slow that tune, tune down, beautiful tune. We've got a wow wows and woo-woos in, and that's the lovely thing about playing along as well, is that if you play along with the professional, then you can start mimicking the tone and the sound and the bending and the shaping of the note. And your tone, as you can hear from Katie, is the more she played, the more fantastic she sounded, because she was kind of almost like hearing how she wanted the saxophone to sound, and a lot of the saxophone is in your nut. You think warm, rich, beautiful sound, it comes out. Whatever you're thinking, it comes out, okay? So that's St. James's Infirmary, one of the greatest blues songs of all time from New Orleans. If you get a chance to go to New Orleans, go to New Orleans, I've been there twice. Long time ago now, 2086, amazing, amazing, amazing city full of music. So, St. James's Infirmary, bluesy interlude. Enjoy playing it. Step four, a bluesy interlude, is to do another bluesy tune written by yours truly called Morning Blues. 
And this was inspired by watching um, a Clint Eastwood film that he did with Burt Reynolds many years ago called City Lights, which is well worth not watching. Dreadful film. But anyway, during this film, Richard Raintree has been put in the ground and there's this amazing sax um, solo being played under, with the sax player under the tree. So it kind of gave me the inspiration to take this idea. So with this one, again, we're going to wear our notes, woo notes. We're going to bring the blue note into play as well. So this is called Morning Blues, just a really nice, melancholy, miserable blues because we like a bit of all that on the saxophone because it does the misery well. OK, so here we go. Kate's going to echo it back to me. And here we go. That's right, go again, go in the beginning again, take the weird blue around, piece and nice and easy one first blue. Well done. So morning blues. And the lovely thing about this tune is hardly anyone knows it, so you can play it in almost however you like. You can bend notes and shape notes and, and play it exactly as, as you want to play. The lovely thing about unaccompanied saxophone playing is it's very powerful. It's a very emotive thing. So um, again, you can shape it in any which way you like. So morning blues on the B blues on the saxophone from a bluesy interlude. So again, with time, you can literally, if I just play a little bit, it's all running together. So there you go. So the bluesy interlude, beautiful piece. Have fun with it and get the B blues even further sort of under your fingers and enjoy it. Step five is how to growl on the saxophone, which is one of the most important sounds to be able to do on the saxophone. Now, there are three ways to do it. And the first way we're going to do today is called very posh to call flat Italian. So what you're going to be able to say is to be able to roll your eyes, go Ralph or Rodney or Rupert and roll your arse. So practice doing this. Now there's one thing rolling your arse um, and it's quite a different thing when you've got a saxophone in your mouth. Now not everyone can roll their arse, about one in three or four people can roll their arse, all right? So we're swerving this for Katie because she's not one of the fortunate ones, okay? <laughs> but apparently according to my son Oscar, there is a way of doing it, so I will find out for you. If you're really determined to do it, there is a way of practicing of rolling your arse. Now, should you be able to roll your arse, this is how you, you, you do it on the sax. Firstly, you find a nice middle range note like a B or a C, something nice and in the middle of the sax. Secondly, this is dirting or bumping the air into the sax, so you have to blow quite hard. If you can roll your arse, practice going a bit like a horse. Once you do that, then very loosely put the mouthpiece into your mouth, very loosely, almost barely put your front teeth on the top. 
So all the is happening here. So as the sound's going in, it's all chopped up. So that's the rolling of the R's one. It's a really nice way to growl. And you have to blow quite hard, so it leaves you a little bit heady as well. But it's a beautiful sound. So that's step five, which is rolling your R's, how to growl on the alto sax. Step six, the second way to growl, which is either like a buzz or a hum. So what you do with this is you literally go mm, as though you're humming almost out your nose. Now, the way to do it is to grab yourself a kazoo, and here's a nice one from the 60s, proper metal one, and you make the same noise as that. You go do 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 do, literally from the top of your throat, and it shouldn't hurt at all. The next one does, but this one doesn't. Go do 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 do. Brilliant. Okay, you've done that before. Bro, okay. So it's that same sound. So again, grab something like a C. And if you listen to my head when I'm making this noise, Katie, you can hear me go. And all my head can go. Like that, okay? So I'll try and do that and blow really hard on a B or a C. Something. That's it. Okay, I can't hear any noise coming out of your head. That's it, even harder again, great. Yeah, you can feel that, it's okay. It's threatening, isn't it? It's just undercut, isn't it? And again, one more time, really force it. Nearly there, lovely, obviously. Okay, so now you need to be obsessive <laughs> about that, okay? So next time you see Katie, she can be able to growl, okay? Now, all the ways, all the ways to growl, when I taught myself these over the years, the came quite quickly. That one didn't. That's one I had just kept being a bit bloody-minded and kept going, and then one morning, I'm like, come on, I'm a singer, I must be able to do it. Because the, the way that they describe it is to go, ah, but it's not, it's a, and you have to do it really hard, and your head just has to be full of the, okay, when you're doing it? And what's lovely about that sound, it's quite an American sound, and it sort of defines the sax almost as an American sound, but one of my great heroes, a guy called Kinkers, he uses different shades of it when he's playing, so he's got that. And he kind of sh shades it in, so when you get really good at it, it's lovely because it stops that lovely virginal sound of the sax and puts a little bit of dirt in there as well. Now, if you're feeling really outrageous, you can mix the two together. You can go and hum at the same time. So if I pass out now, then that's why, okay? So you've got this. And then overblown D at the end. So you could also mix those two together, okay? So that's the growl. Great fun. You have to blow hard. You have to keep doing it, and it will click. But more, I'm blowing out going, right? Don't do it while driving, please stop you. But if you go, <laughs> then that'd be really cool. All right, so that's growl. And um, that's how to growl the second way. There is but one more way. Step seven is the third way that we're gonna do it, the Blarit Sax way. There are other ways to growl from diaphragm and all this, but the third way we do it is this way. So this is as though you're Welsh or you're, or you're from Liverpool. You've got a bit of <laughs> like that. So it's right from the top of the throat, okay? And it kind of hurts the throat, but it produces one of the most fantastic sort of sort of vicious growls that you can get, like a spitty growl. And it's used a lot in old um, R&B and, and rock and roll. They get a real, but it really hurts the top of your throat. I don't use it very often, but it's a really no. If the other two don't work, try that one. So I go, as so you're trying to almost that's it. And again, on a real easy note, like a B or a C, and just go really make a real nasty sound. That's it, you start to make that. The second you spit, isn't it? Not very nice, but it's the way. Think of yourself as a footy player, go. Starting to do it a bit. Okay, so you know what you're going to be doing for the next couple yeah. of weeks. So three ways to growl, okay? Growl, way number one is number two, and number three is okay? Those are the three sounds, principal sounds to produce a growl. And mix them up in any which way you like. But they do take time, 
And as I said at the beginning of my teacher book, sometimes it's one of those things to do maybe after you've had a few because you can overthink what you're doing and you don't want to overthink what you're doing when it comes to producing those sounds. So sometimes you're a bit looser, so do it after you're slightly hungover or something, and you'll probably find it will come out one morning as one or two of those did for me many years ago. Okay, so keep, keep trying it and it will come out, I promise you. And it's a really important thing to have because it's the only time you can change the overall tone of a sax. Okay, so that's growling in the bluesy interlude, step seven, the blowout sax way to learn, um, the blowout sax revolutionary way to learn the saxophone. Step eight, to conclude a bluesy interlude from the blowout sax revolutionary approach to learn the saxophone is this. We have learned the, the B blue scale, so we've had a little break from learning our F sharp and C sharp. Put the scale under your fingers because we're going to be using it later. It's used for a lot of tunes um, and the basis of it was used for that song uh, One Day by Baker Matt, which is beautiful as well. And also, um, it's also the principal um, key on the alto sax in Jimmy Sax's No Man No Cry. So it's a really important scale to kind of get licked. BF, B -A -F, B -A -D -E -F -F sharp A and B. We've learned two fantastic blues tunes. One made uh, immortalized by uh, Louis Armstrong and one written by yours truly. And also, we've learned how to growl, which takes time. So be patient and keep persevering with it, and it will come out. So very important steps to learn on the sax. Really enjoy it. We're going to be doing loads of blues. Blues is the basis of all sorts of fantastic music. Funk, R&B, soul, the blues scale. will give you an awful lot on the saxophone. And some of the great sax players of all time have based a career on literally two or three fantastic blues scales. So take your time, enjoy your blues scale, and then we'll go on to the next chapter and then the rest of our black notes um, on the sax. Enjoy it.